Do you have any non-negotiables in life? You know those things that if they happen, you stop going somewhere, you break a relationship with a friend or a loved one. What are those things for you? And how did you come about for them? Are they from deeply held beliefs, from preferences, or things that keep you feeling grounded and safe? If I'm honest, I know that some of my non-negotiables are kind of silly and in reality probably could be negotiated a little bit. In thinking about our faith, I wonder how our non-negotiables may be negotiated a little bit with God, moving toward God's will more than ours. Let us consider these things today. Glad you're here with us for work in progress. Let us worship God together. In a previous church I served, from time to time I was invited to offer a prayer at the beginning of city council meetings. It was a strange experience, to be honest with you. On the one hand, it was an honor that they would want me to kick off their meeting. But on the other hand, I felt like I was somehow being used. <laughs> they, would, they would say to me, uh, Pastor Clifford, it needs to be a non-sectarian prayer. And I was pretty sure I knew what that meant. Sometimes they would just explicitly say, we ask that you please not just name Jesus. Um, and I thought, well, why do you want a Christian pastor to come offer the prayer if, if you've got to tell us what we're allowed to say or what we're not allowed to say? But I, I tried to be polite and, and accept the opportunity when it would come my way. But I also tried in my prayer to make a point. And the way that I made that point is my prayer was always the same prayer. It was Psalm 146, our reading for today. Listen for God's word to us from this psalm and imagine this opening a city council meeting. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So when I would pray that prayer to open city council, there would be this pregnant silence when I finished. It was an uncomfortable silence. I felt like what was happening in that moment was I had been brought in to really offer God's blessing over whatever business the city council was to do that day. They had their agenda, and they wanted God's blessing over it. But what Psalm 146 reminds us of is God's agenda. God's agenda is what really matters. So the question isn't about getting a blessing over the agendas that we set in our lives, in our communities, in our states, in our nation, in our world. The real question is, is our agenda in line with God's? And what is God's agenda? Well, it's pretty clear. Execute justice for the oppressed, give food to the hungry, open the eyes of the blind, lift up those who are bowed down, watch over the stranger, uphold the orphan, and the widow. 
This is God's agenda. It is the, the plumb line by which we are called to measure our agendas. You know, we live in a world where political forces always seem to co-opt religion to serve their own purposes. This is a dangerous practice. It leads to idolatry of political perspectives, not to faithfulness to God. Abraham Lincoln was once asked, did he believe that God was on his side in the Civil War? And his response was, that's not the right question. The question is whether or not we are on God's side. That was the question back in the 1860s, and I think it's the question today, the question for all eternity. We all have our own agendas in our lives, in our relationships, in our congregation, in the city, in the nation, at every level of our existence, we have our agendas, our plans of what to do. And so often, we just want God to bless that, to bless whatever it is we plan on doing. But I think the great question of faith is how do our plans, how do our agendas line up with God's? As you go forth into this week, consider that question of faith through the lens of Psalm 146. For in the end, it's our ultimate calling as disciples of Jesus Christ to join God's transforming work in the world to be about God's agenda. Amen. Time to sing your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, O oh my soul God's holy name Singing like never before Oh my soul I worship your holy name My time has come Still my soul Sing your praise Unending Ten thousand years And then forever Bless the Lord Oh my soul God's holy name Sing like never God's holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship your holy name
Psalm 146 resets our agenda. It sends us forth into the world not to be about our plans, but to be about God's plan and God's purposes, God's list uh, for what needs to happen in the world. If I'm going to be about that, I need to be sent forth in prayer, and I invite you to pray along with me. Gracious and merciful God, what if Psalm 146 was a to-do list for us? What if it sends us forth out into the world to be your people, uh, bearing praise and sending out hope in a world that is broken and crying for love and justice? Send us forth, Lord, send us forth to praise you all the day long. Send us forth to trust not in the powers that be, but in your power, your presence, your purpose in the world. Send us forth not towards our plan, but towards your, that we can be your hope. Send us forth to uphold the causes that you care about, to uphold the cause of the oppressed, to give food to the hungry, to set the prisoners free, to lift up those who are bowed down, to give sight to the blind, to love the righteous, to watch over the foreigner, to sustain those who are widowed and fatherless, to frustrate the ways of the wicked. Send us forth, Lord, with renewed energy for your agenda, not for ours. Send us forth as salt. Send us forth as light. Send us forth to add endlessly to the list of 10,000 reasons why we should praise and worship you. Send us forth to glorify you, Lord, in all that is good and right and just and worthy in this world. Send us forth, not for our plans, but for yours, Lord, and help us to know that every step of the way you are by our side to encourage and to guide. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Work in Progress. We're so grateful for your presence, and we hope that through this worship, you've had a moment of communion with God that will bless you, perhaps challenge you in the week ahead. As you go on your way, again, consider how your agenda lines up with God's through the lens of Psalm 146. And as you go on your way, may the grace of Christ attend you and the love of God surround you and the Holy Spirit keep you, that you might live in faith and abound in hope and grow in love this day and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul. God's holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul